let's get into it. Uh, let's do injury updates just because you know, I can break, Sikoni, Byro, um, yeah, so injury update, uh, Byro is back, um, so he will play tonight, which is great news. Uh, Sacconi is uh, still out, but more day-to-day -day now. Uh, I think that, you know, there's a chance he, he could play Saturday or Tuesday. Uh, he won't tonight, but we're getting close to Sacconi, which would be great to get him back. Um, Malone um, was in orange yesterday, but he, he will play tonight. Uh, Kulik is out tonight, um, day to day, upper body. Uh, don't think it's going to be anything long term. Uh, pro potentially back Saturday or Tuesday. Now, before the break, you talked about being a little disjointed. You talked about missing Viral in the lineup. You know, what will be how bad coming back tonight? Yeah, I mean, any anytime you have any player out, um, you you feel their effects, right? Everybody brings their own unique. Uh, abilities, talents, attitude, energy to the group. You know, Byro's our best player. So when you have a player of his caliber out, uh, you feel it on so many fronts. He's, he's one of your best players in the power play. He's probably your most consistent five on five player. He's your best defensive player. He's probably your top penalty killer. So when you have, when he's so good in so many of those areas, you, you, you just feel that, right? So having him back is, is great. I thought we took good steps in Belleville, uh, both nights. Um, we played really good in the loss, did a lot of good things. I think I would shot him like 40 to 20 that night. Um, and then, and then found a way to win a, a greasy, ugly, hard fought overtime game. Uh, on Saturday, heading into break, which was which was really important. This felt like we f we felt more like ourselves um, than than we have consistently. Like we've had spurts of it in the couple weeks. You know, it wasn't that long, but it was two two and a half weeks where I thought we were a little disjointed. Thought we played a little slow. Um, we're not a team built for to play a slow game. We're not a built, team built to play a half court game, so to speak, if you use the basketball terminology. We're a fast break team. Uh, we're, we're, we need to be a puck pressure team. We need to, when we don't have the puck, we need to eliminate time and space and use our speed and our tenacity to pressure the puck to force our opponent into turnovers. When we have the puck, we have to be an attacking, aggressive team. And I just thought that some of those elements were less than stellar. Uh, we needed to get back to, to driving that identity. Uh, to be in a puck pressure attacking team. And I thought we took steps back in that direction in Belleville. Also a little beneficial, how did everyone seem to practice last night? You know? Yeah, I think the break, I, I think breaks are beneficial. Whether you're playing, whether you're on a roll or whether you're struggling individually and collectively. So um, it's, just, it's a long season. And the, the Christmas break in, in pro hockey is not real long either, right? So uh, to get four or five days, to take a breath, to spend time with your family, for some of the guys to, to go to a warmer climate, and get some vitamin D on them, um, those things are good. And the energy was high last night. Now we have a, you know, we have a real test tonight. I mean, this, this is a very good hockey team, Springfield, uh, with, a, with a very good lineup right now. Well, if you look at their forward lineup, it's, it's their D are big and heavy. Uh, not to say they're not talented. They have some talent back there too, but they're, they're, most of their D are 6'3", 220-ish type defensemen. They're a big, heavy decor. Um, but their forward group is, is dynamic uh, right through the lineup. I mean, but the first line alone, like, you know, that's one of the better lines in the American Hockey League. And Pekka's now healthy, and he's one of the premier forwards in the league. Firk has been one of the best goal scorers in the American Hockey League for – for most of the last decade when he hasn't been in the NHL. Um, and Highmore is an all-star this year, right? So, but, but that, it goes past that. I, you know, their, their, their whole forward lineup uh, is loaded with offensive weapons. A really, really deep team right now. Subban will play tonight. Uh, great win by Michael Hauser uh, on Saturday. Um, you know, and I, I talked to Subi, like we, we've been riding him pretty hard. Uh, right before Christmas and then right after Christmas, and deservedly so uh, because of his play. And trying to get Subi just back into the rhythm of playing a lot of games again because it's been so long, uh, so many years since he's had this type of opportunity to be the number one. Um, 
you know, it's really probably been like since 16, 17. Um, he's been mostly an NHL backup or injured for a lot or COVID for a lot of the last five or six years. And uh, there's a different, there's a different mental and physical elements to, to being the guy that goes over the wall every night. Uh, and I think he's done a really good job of that. And I just felt that maybe we'd pushed him too far in terms of how many games we've been playing him. And Hauser's very good goalie and giving uh, Subban, because the day off was almost mentally like two extra days for him on, on all-star break. So instead of a four or five day break, it was a six or seven day break for him mentally uh, just to kind of recharge. Um, and I told him that was going to be the case on Friday morning. I let him know so he could have the just a little mental reprieve um, and then and then be ready to go back and attack it uh, coming out of break. How did he take that? Um, just He's great. You know, I, I mean, I communicate with all of our players a lot, but, but especially our goaltenders. I think that clarity, um, players like clarity. Uh, they don't like uncertainty. Uh, they like clarity. Whether it's good information or bad information, they'd rather have the clarity, and then they'd get their head wrapped around it and then, and then attack it from there. Um, and, and, and in Subi's case, he played uh, junior in Belleville when Belleville's an OHL team as well, so he did have like former Billet family and, and you know people that then he could enjoy seeing without the stress of preparing uh, to start the next night. Uh, so I just thought all of those things were going to be good for him mentally to get him in a good spot to be back and start tonight against Springfield. Susie asked my questions already. So. You are so good. Oh, yes. Jerry Davies, OT winner again. He scored one in Cleveland too. Like, is he becoming a go to guy in overtime? He's a go to guy all the time, really. Uh, yeah, overtime. Uh, good call by Mike Weber uh, to, to start with him. You know, we're, you know, you don't have a lot of time on the bench there, and you're going from five on five mode to all of a sudden three on three. And you have your idea written out in advance, but but that changes as the game goes on and who's playing the best. And um, you know, Webby thought that Davies should go first, um, and, and so we put him out there with Malone and Rosine, uh, and uh, you know, fortunately they delivered. Great defensive play by Rosine and Hauser. To, to negate the two on one forwards usually aren't that comfortable playing two on ones against them, and and Isak did a really good job of not letting a pass happen to give Hauser a chance. Hauser made the save. Malone made a great stretch pass. You don't see often that you send your defenseman in for a breakaway, um, but that's the way it works in three on three. And um, I think Jeremy Davies has, has played excellent hockey over the last couple months, five on five, um, and on penalty kill, uh, but in overtime. Specifically, his explosiveness of his skating uh, is really a weapon. Uh, and, and we saw that, how he pulled away from the defenders in that situation. Yeah, he's been under opponent's skin a lot more lately. Is that something that you guys talked about because he just got more comfortable? Like, where do you think that comes from? I think naturally he's a real nasty competitor. Um, and so I think as he's more, more comfortable here, but we have talked to him about those things. like. We've talked a lot of our D this year, and obviously Clegg's done a really good job, and he's been up a lot. So that that as much as the power play is fun to be on in the American League, and it gives you some pride and some confidence because you're getting points and those things, how good you run a power play in the American League isn't going to get you the NHL. It's, it's just not um, because Rasmus Dahlin runs the power play. And, and every team has a, a, an elite power play quarterback. So... What's going to get you to the NHL is how good you defend five on five, how well you break the puck out and transition the puck. And uh, I think Jeremy has done a really good job in the last couple months of trying to own that, trying to be more physical, harder to play against, breaking the puck out with more efficiency, uh, getting his team playing in the right direction more often than not. Um, so I think he's done a great job of that. And then uh, and just a little off of that, you know, like that was a really physical series, um, you know, We've talked about the violence of Belleville before, and I thought Saturday was egregious in that manner. And and how impressed I was with um, Isak Rosin and, and Yuri Kulik um, as 18 and 19 year olds to handle that level of physicality and violence and kind of ugliness to the game at times um, and, and play with the competitiveness and the poise. And, and they drove us. They were two of our best players in that series. So. I just thought it was really impressive performance by Rosine uh, and Kulik that weekend. To watch them 
you know, we've talked about how they've been transforming into AHL players over the season, but to see them take on such an aggressive game the way that they did it. Yeah, that was really fun as a coach because um, I think that it was a game, that was a series earlier in the season that they wouldn't have been nearly as impactful or if they were impactful, it would have only been when the puck came to them. Uh, and I thought the two of them were, uh, you could easily argue that they were our two best forwards in, in, in that, in the totality of the two game series. Um, and to be able to do that at that age, as I said, against a team as physical and big and heavy and mean as Belleville is, uh, was very fun to see and really impressive and encouraging. And now we just got to keep the thumb on them and, and just keep demanding that, you know, that's why I said that Isak, like if you can do it against them two nights in a row, you can do it against anybody in this league uh, in, in terms of handling and that level of heaviness to the game. Um, so I think, I think those are moments that as young players, you can gain a lot of confidence in yourself and, and then try to run with it.